Now tonight, I want you to turn with me to the fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel. Luke, the fourth chapter. And you know, when I first preached on this passage, strange to say, I have it here in my Bible. I preached on it first on October 22, 1980 in Tokyo, Japan. The second time I preached it was August 27, 1987 in Helsinki, Finland. I don't guess I've ever preached on it in America. So I'll preach tonight to you on that passage. The fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel, beginning at verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And they delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the 61st chapter of Isaiah, by the way, in the Old Testament. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty from them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And I want you to fasten your eyes tonight on Jesus. Who was Jesus? Newsweek magazine had a cover story some time ago entitled, Who Was Jesus? Who was he? I heard when we went to Japan, I heard about a young woman who was searching for peace and joy in her life. She hadn't found it. And she went to a fortune teller who said, worship God on high. And she did that as best she could, but she couldn't find the answer. She asked the fortune teller, who is God? And one day the fortune teller said, you have a debt to pay to the God of water for all that you have used since you were born. She went to the streams and the lakes and the sea to worship the spirit of water. But she still had fear and unrest in her life. She couldn't sleep at night and would ask herself, why should my life be so troubled? The fortune teller said, you're under some spirit's curse. You should be more earnest in your worship of God. What she longed for was real joy and peace. So she went to a Christian meeting that someone took her to. And there she found Jesus. And it changed her life. She wanted a heart free from fear and filled with satisfaction. And she found it in Jesus. Just Jesus. There are many people like that in the world that are searching. They don't know what they're searching for. They don't have peace, they don't have joy, they don't have happiness in their lives. And they're wanting to find something or someone to help them. And they go to different religious people, different Eastern religions, and other religions to try to find an answer, and they can't find it. But then finally, many of them come to Jesus and they found that he is different. What did Jesus claim? We'll have an inauguration of a new president on January 20th. Jesus gave his inaugural speech here in what we're reading. I remember the second inauguration of President Reagan. I had the privilege of being there. And it was cold, about zero. And many hundreds of young people had come from all over the country to go in the marching bands and to participate in the inaugural ceremonies. And they were freezing. And doctors were coming out in the paper warning that it shouldn't be held. So they asked me to come to a meeting that was chaired by Supreme Court Justice Berger. And we gathered and we 
thought and then we prayed. And it was moved and recommended to recommend to the president that the parade be canceled. And they canceled it. And they held it inside. Jesus had an inauguration. And when the president gives his inaugural speech, the purpose is to announce to his fellow Americans what he hopes to accomplish during the administration over the next four years. Here in Luke 4, Jesus gave his inaugural speech. He gave six reasons why he came to earth from heaven. First, he said to preach the gospel to the poor. Well, who are the poor? All of us. He was talking about spiritually. We're all spiritually poor. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and we're all poor. No amount of money, no amount of good works can get you one inch into heaven. But he came with good news. He said, I have come to forgive you, to change you, and to bring you to heaven if you put your faith and your confidence in me. Who are the poor? All of us. Then secondly, he said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. Look at our newsstands today filled with stories of the brokenhearted. Our television programs filled with people with broken hearts. Thirdly, Jesus came to preach deliverance to the captives. All of us are in some sort of prison. You say, but I'm not in prison, I'm not behind bars. But we're in a prison maybe to some drug or some habit or some sin that we can't break away from. We try to. It may be losing our temper. It may be jealousy. It may be pride. It may be something in our lives that we don't want other people to know but we know it's wrong and we are prisoners. Jesus said, I've come to preach deliverance to the captives. You can be delivered tonight through Christ. Then the fourth thing he said was, he came to bring sight to the blind. And the Bible teaches that we are blind, we're spiritually blind. You see people with white canes in the street they're blind, legally blind. They have to be helped or they try to find their way as best they can and you feel sorry for them. Well, you are like that. Spiritually, God looks at you as though you are blind and you're stumbling around in the dark, trying to find a way out, trying to find one little light somewhere. Jesus said, He's the light of the world, and he can open your eyes. Just as he opened the eyes of blind people in his day, he can open your spiritual eyes. And then fifthly, Jesus came to set at liberty them that are bruised. How many people tonight are bruised? We're hurting. It may be a disappointment. It may be a death. It may be a thousand things and you're bruised and hurting. Millions of people tonight are hurting. They're hurting materially or they're hurting spiritually. They're hurting psychologically and they want to be healed. Christ can do that tonight. That's what he claimed. That's what he said. And then lastly, he said, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He was referring to that day that is yet to come when he's going to come back and he's going to set up his kingdom and that's when we're going to have peace in the Middle East that'll be permanent when he comes and we're gonna have peace all over the world. What does the Bible claim about him? Let's fasten our eyes upon him. 
He's the creative Christ. He created everything. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. I read in the paper the other day where they've discovered whole new galaxies and the Bible indicates there's no end to it. Scientists are beginning to find out what the Bible has taught all along. They can't find the end of the universe. It's way out there and there's no end. There's no beginning and there's no end. It's forever and we can't understand it. The most brilliant scientists can't figure it out. He created it all. He made it all. That's what the Bible teaches about him. The paper said they were mystery objects estimated to be five and 12 times more massive than Jupiter. Can you imagine that? And then beyond that, other galaxies. You can look at the world through a microscope. I was watching the other day in which they took some living creature out of the bottom of one of those boiling wells in Yellowstone National Park, where it was the hottest place that we know in our country. And yet, no scientist ever believed anything could live in that kind of heat but they pulled creatures out of that that are living. He created it all. I looked at my brain when I was at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. They showed me brains, they showed me all parts of the body and how it's fit together and all the nerves and all the, I had a doctor come to me. He's a great cardiologist, a great friend to me for many years. He didn't come as a doctor, he came as a friend and he sat and told me a lot about the human heart because he has the largest number of cardiologists under him of any place in the whole world. Now I'm afraid to tell you, I may exaggerate and I don't want to exaggerate, but there were scores of cardiologists there. And he was telling me something about the human heart and all that's involved in the heart. And it's hard to believe. We have to believe it by faith. We look at a world through the microscope and he created all of it. He put it all together. And then he's the compassionate Christ. The scripture says he went about doing good. Jesus was never asked for help without responding. He made the blind to see and the mute to speak and the deaf to hear. He touched and cleansed the lepers. What a marvelous person he was.